All right, welcome back to Adobe After Effects basic training. I have a second lesson here for you guys that will show you a much better way of animating your text so that it looks a lot more lively than just text that fades in and fades out. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at what we're trying to create. Go back to my folder. You guys will find this file in your land school folder on your desktop. I'm going to supply this folder or file called Lesson 3. You need to right click on it to play it with QuickTime because it doesn't play in Media Player. When it comes up, hit play. And you'll see a pond with the text, the animation, and the dragonfly dragging in the text along with a cool little effect to the directed by name. So that's what we're going to try to get ourselves fixed here. So um, that file, so you know what it looks like. You are also going to be supplied with these four files that we're going to use. And we'll start the project right now by importing just the Lotus and the Pond background. Don't bring in the two project files from Photoshop and Illustrator, as we'll deal with those later. All right, now that we've got the project item started, we are going to set ourselves a new composition. So we're going to go to well, the button. And we got comp1, call it the pond. And because we're using footage that is old school, like 15 years old, it's set to the rectangular, sorry, square standard of DV video, not the rectangular standard. So make sure you choose the preset of NTSCDV, which changes your width and height to 720 by 480. As far as time, you need to make it 10 seconds long. My composition or my After Effects is set up to count by frames, not time. For you, if it says time, just highlight and say 1000 and hit OK. For me, I have to look at 30 second frames per uh, 30 frames per second. Um, so 60, 90, 120 is 4 seconds, 240 is 8 seconds, add 60, so 300 is 10 seconds. So I'll be working with 300 frames. Okay, so here we are. I've got the uh, two files in and I've got the composition created as the pond. What we're going to do is bring the lotus and the pond background. I'm going to shift click to select them both, bring them down into the composition and both of the items are now there. Make sure Lotus is on top when we get started. Go ahead and select Lotus and hit the S key for scale. And what we're going to do with the scale is bring it down to about 30 percent of its value which makes it much smaller. We're going to also change its position so I'm going to click on the P key for the Lotus to get position and we're going to change the position down to 170 by 520 which will make the Lotus appear just off screen. Okay, so now that we've got that set, let's hit P again to hide the properties for Lotus. And it's a good idea to hit save right now because After Effects likes to crash. And it's good to save your work as you go. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is create and format our title. So in the Tools panel, we're going to grab the T tool and we're going to click inside the composition and type the pond. Press enter to make the text stick and then we're going to actually change up some of the title. So we're going to look for the character panel which is over here. So the character panel deals with text, characters, while the paragraph panel deals with centering and alignment. So in the character panel I want to make sure that you have chosen the proper text and size so I'm going to highlight the title and I'm going to choose the font Mirid Pro please look for this it's alphabetical Mirid Pro once you select that make sure that your color inner color is set to white and that the outer stroke is none and then we're good there finally Instead of regular, let's set it to bold. And lastly, size. Let's set it to 72 in the text size box. 
All right, so we're going to leave everything else set the way it is, get my cursor back and move it here to the center. All right, now to use the paragraph panel, I want to make sure that when it moves or if I animate it, that it animates from the center out, not from the left side or the right side. So I'm going to go to paragraph, center, and you can see the anchor point is in the middle. If we choose it to the left, the anchor point's over here, to the right, it's over there, and the animations would originate from that position. I'm going to leave it here at center. All right. Next thing we're going to do is position our text. So we're going to select the pond layer, make sure it's selected, and we're going to do something to help make it fill the screen because we're going to do an animation from large to small like you saw in the sample video of this lesson. So we're going to go up to layer then down to transform and over to fit to comp width. That'll make the text fit exactly to the comps width. It keeps it all centered and symmetrical. Now to make sure things are set up the right way, there's a couple things that you can do. Underneath um, view you have show grid and that allows you to see your actual positioning which in this program is very important and you can see this is definitely set up properly okay that exists in view you can also find it down here I'll turn the grid off and we'll keep going good idea to save again after effects can be a little temperamental we're going to use a text animation preset now to uh, animate our title. The easiest way to do this is to use one of the many animation presets that come with After Effects. We're going to apply an animation preset and we're going to customize it and save it again. So what we'll do here is make sure that we're paying attention to our current time indicator. Hit the home button on your keyboard because that'll bring you down to the home position in your composition. And we're then going to uh, work our way into our text animation preset. Okay, so what we're going to do now, and you might remember this from previous uh, lessons in Video Copilot or even in class, you need browse presets if you'd like to see some of these presets. Of course, in the effects and presets panel, you have a whole bunch of different things you can add and then keyframe yourself. But Adobe went ahead and created some preset type things that have keyframes already built in. So this folder is full of all sorts of great pre-made animations. Okay, so we could come in here and then look, but the problem is we only see the name. Might not know what it looks like. So we're going to make this easier on ourselves and go to Browse Presets. From here, there's Browse Presets. You can also go to Animation, Browse Presets, which will bring up the Browse Preset window. Once this window comes up, I'd like you to um, go to the text folder. And inside of the text folder, we have various folders that we can use for animating text. We're going to blur this time. So in the blurs folder, come on in here. And you'll notice, of course, that if you click on any one of these one time, it'll show you a preview. Don't click on it twice yet. Because we also went to home in our composition panel, that'll give us the ability right there to make sure that the effect is set from there in. Wherever the CTI is, the current time indicator is where the effect is placed. So we're going to go ahead and use evaporate. And since we're home, I'm going to double click on it. And it puts, whoops, a little mistake there, made by many. Make sure your layer is selected first. And then double click on it. And it places it at the CTI. And you'll see that it goes away. Now, of course, an easy fix to this might be hitting the U key to reverse my keyframes, but there's another method to actually fix this without having to worry about positioning because it'll fix it exact for you. So what we're going to do is, hold on a second, we're going to go in and customize this animation preset by going up here to animation in the menu bar and we're going to find that there's a keyframe assistant tool and we're going to be able to time reverse the keyframes. Of course I forgot to do something important first that without doing doesn't make it work. I have to click on the bar that has the keyframes so that I can now go to animation 
keyframe assistant, time reverse, which will flip the two keyframes for me, giving me from an animate in, or out, sorry, to an animate in. All right, so it just turned those two keyframes around and left them in position. So that part's pretty good. Now, what we're going to do is test it. We're pretty happy. Now we're ready to move to the next step of our project. I'm going to click on the pond and hit U to close it down and begin the next part. Let's save again. Smart idea. All right, we're going to animate with scale keyframes. You already know what scale is from the transform properties. Same thing from Premiere. So we're going to move to the third second of our composition so that everything works out well. Stay with me on the timings. You go to 300. Zero, zero. I'm going to have to use frames. 30 frames a second times 3 is 90 frames. So at the 90th frame, I am at 3 seconds. I'm going to go to the uh, pond text layer and I'm going to hit the S key on my keyboard to bring up the scale. I'll click the stopwatch so I get a keyframe. Oh, there's one already here so I'm going to click it once to get rid of it and click it again so I now have a keyframe right here for my scale and I'm going to move ahead two seconds from the three second mark to the five second mark which for me would be 30 times 5 or 150 frames. 150 frames. There we are. And I'm going to now change my scale down to 100% from this 218 that the automatic fit thing we did earlier set us to 100. So from 218 down to 100. And now we have this with the cool water in the background. Okay. So, next thing that we're going to do is preview the scale animation, which uh, we already did that. We previewed and it looks good. You can obviously hit your spacebar to take a look at it in a rendered state. Now, it does have the regular keyframes, which causes it to start and end immediately, which can be a little bit fake. So, I'm going to highlight both of these keyframes, right-click on them to the keyframe assistant, and <clears throat> set them to easy ease, which now gives me smoother in, smoother stop. Okay, so now that we've got that set, let's continue on in this tutorial. Good idea to save. So I'm going to animate now using parenting. So the text scale animation we just applied gets us halfway there, but we need to animate the scale of the lotus flower as well. So we could manually animate this lotus layer, but it's easier to take advantage of the parenting relationships and after effects. So let's go back to home. Okay. Click the timeline panel. In the timeline panel, let's click the parent menu for the lotus layer and let's connect it to the pond. Of course, you've seen this in Video Copilot, whoops, which would connect it to the pond. But another way of doing the same thing is just telling it what you want to connect it to, the pond. It's the same thing as dragging the whip. So now we've got the lotus layer doing whatever it is that the pond layer will do. So let's take a look and see what happens here. And the lotus flower now moves with the pond into position, like they were in unison all along. Okay, good. So, we're going to go back to home, hit the home key on the keyboard. I'm going to hit the pond layer and hit S to get rid of my scale and save control S. So, now you know a little bit about parenting. Remember, anything that you parent from one layer to the other, whatever animations are happening in the parent, the child layer here, would take the same effects. So, we're going to animate in now some a new Photoshop text that we have already. And remember, when you bring in other project files from other programs like Photoshop, Illustrator, or even project files from After Effects, you get a chance to import them as either footage, so one file, or all the intact layers that were used to build that particular project file. So we're going to go ahead and double click to import. And inside of our folder, we're going to look for the credits file from Photoshop. We're going to select that. Now down here at the bottom where it says footage, I'm going to make sure that it's the composition, not the footage, and retaining everything. 
from the original. I'm going to hit open and it will ask me, do you want to be able to edit this? Of course I do. I want to keep everything separate and not merge to footage. So that brings in the credits. At this point, we're ready to keep going. Um, we're going to drag the credits composition into our timeline comp. So now this composition is inside of this composition, and you'll see that our credits just came in. Okay, and at this point, they're not where they need to be, but we'll work on this part. So we're going to edit this imported text. So the text we imported isn't currently editable in After Effects. Remember the lesson one when we brought in a composition with some Photoshop files. We had our background for the DJ's floor, and then we had the text. Now we threw that text away and added our own, but we could have used that text and then continued on. But you can't get a title to become editable. No matter what you try, you can't do anything to it unless you do one more step. So we're going to actually connect both of these together. So I open them both. And we're going to go up to Layer. And we're going to tell it to go to Convert to Editable Text. This right here allows us to turn those Photoshop files into something we can now grab and use. And now they're ready to be edited. All right, good. So we're going to deselect both layers. And then we're going to double click on the second layer in the timeline panel, and it automatically highlights everything. Now, if you're paying attention, you can see there were some misspelled situations here in the Photoshop file, so we can actually correct them now. We need to add an E for animated, and that K for documentary should be a C. Now we fixed the animated documentary text, so go ahead and do that if you haven't. And then we're going to go over to the selection tool, and we're going to shift click to select both layers. Uh, you can shift click or just loop. Both layers are selected. I'm going to go to the character panel now so I can set the font to what I want. Now we were using Mirrored Pro before so let's keep things sort of similar for a constant smooth look. So I need to change from Times New Roman to Mirrored Pro. And both of these fonts now will match up with the pawn text very well. Now we're inside of the credits composition, which only shows us the credits. Of course, everything else is out here in the pawn composition. I'm going to take a break here, and we're going to be able to let you go on to lesson two after this.